Starting September 16, 2021, the National Capital Region will implement the new COVID-19 Alert Level System proposed by the Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases, or IATF. This video will discuss the important guidelines of this new implementation, so please stay tuned and watch the video to know more. Welcome to Denzi TV. Please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you receive updates as they are posted. On September 13, the IATF released a resolution containing the guidelines on the pilot implementation of alert level system for COVID-19 response in the National Capital Region. The IATF issues these guidelines to enjoin and proactively advocate the principles of three C's, closed, crowded, and close contact strategy against COVID-19 to curb the further spread of infection which shall be applied in the National Capital Region beginning September 16. The COVID-19 alert level system refers to the new community quarantine classification for dealing with COVID-19 covering entire cities and or municipalities aimed to manage and minimize the risk of the disease through system indicators triggers, and thresholds determined by IATF. Here are the details of the alert levels to be followed. Alert level 1 refers to areas wherein case transmission is low and decreasing, total bed utilization rate is low, and the intensive care unit or ICU utilization rate is also low. Alert level 2 refers to areas wherein case transmission is low and decreasing, Healthcare utilization is low, case counts are low, but total bed utilization rate is increasing as well as the ICU utilization rate. Alert level 3 refers to areas wherein case counts are high and increasing, total bed utilization rate is increasing, and the ICU utilization rate is also increasing. Alert level 4 refers to areas wherein case counts are high and increasing, total bed utilization rate is high as well as the ICU utilization rate. And the highest alert level, level 5, refers to areas wherein case counts are alarming and both the total bed and ICU utilization rates are critical. The general guidelines surrounding the alerts level system are the following. The Department of Health shall be the one to identify the alert level of the pilot area, and this area shall follow the protocols consistent with the declared alert level. For the duration of the pilot implementation, classification of the pilot area shall be done weekly unless otherwise specified. Close contacts regardless of the vaccination status and possession of a negative COVID-19 test result of probable and confirmed COVID-19 cases shall undergo 14 days of quarantine in accordance with the isolation and quarantine protocols set by the Department of Health. LGUs in pilot areas shall submit on a daily basis to the respective regional IATF such data as determined by the national government agencies based on the template provided for the IATF Subtechnical Working Group on Data Analytics. And lastly, MPHS or Minimum Public Health Standards shall be implemented at all times consistent with the DOH AO number 20210043 or the Omnibus Guidelines on the MPHS for the safe reopening of institutions. What are the restrictions associated with a specific alert level? Let's start with the guidelines for areas under alert level 5. Areas placed under alert level 5 shall observe the guidelines applicable to Enhanced Community Quarantine or ECQ as provided for under the IATF Omnibus Guidelines on the Implementation of Community Quarantine in the Philippines. Meanwhile, Alert Level 4 is comparable to Modified Enhanced Community Quarantine or MECQ and the details of the restrictions will follow. In Alert Level 4, the following persons shall not be allowed outside of their respective residences. Persons below 18 years old, persons who are over 65 years of age, those with immunodeficiencies, comorbidities, or other health risks, and pregnant women, provided that they shall be allowed access to obtain essential goods and services 
or for work in permitted industries and offices. Other guidelines for Alert Level 4 include Individual outdoor exercises shall be allowed for all ages. Outdoor or al fresco dine-in services are allowed at 30% maximum seating capacity. And indoor dine-in services are allowed at 10% seating capacity. Personal care services such as barber shops, hair spa, nail spa, and beauty salons shall be allowed to operate at 30% maximum seating capacity if conducted outdoors and at 10% if conducted indoors. In-person gatherings for level 4 shall be allowed at a maximum of 30% for venue or seating capacity if conducted outdoors regardless of vaccination status. These gatherings may also be allowed at a limited 10% venue or seating capacity for indoors but may accommodate only individuals who are fully vaccinated against COVID-19. Still in Alert Level 4, gatherings for necrological services, wakes, inurnment, funerals for those who died of causes other than COVID-19 shall be allowed provided that the same shall be limited to immediate family members only upon satisfactory proof of their relationship with the disease and with full compliance with the prescribed minimum public health standards. Agencies and instrumentalities of the government shall remain to be fully operational and shall adhere to at least 20% on-site capacity while applying work from home and other flexible work arrangements. These are the businesses not allowed to operate for Level 4. Indoor venues for meetings, incentives, conferences, and events. Indoor entertainment venues such as cinemas and venues with live performers such as karaoke bars, clubs, concert halls, and the like. Outdoor and indoor amusement parks or theme parks. Indoor recreational venues such as internet cafes, billiard halls, etc. Indoor face-to-face -face classes, examinations, and other education-related activities at all levels. Casinos and other gaming establishments. Social events indoor sports, contact sports, and other personal care services such as derma clinics, wellness, and reflexology. Let's proceed to alert level 3 guidelines. So, the movement of persons shall be allowed except for reasonable restrictions based on age and comorbidities as may be determined by the local government units which should not be stricter as those prescribed under alert level 4 and subject to the oversight, monitoring, and evaluation of the respective regional IATF. Other alert level 3 guidelines, individual outdoor exercises shall also be allowed for all ages, and indoor dine-in services are allowed at 30% seating capacity. Personal care services are now allowed at 30% maximum seating capacity for alert level 3 areas. Religious gatherings are also allowed at 30% maximum seating capacity for Alert Level 3. Gatherings for necrological services are also allowed at 30% maximum. Government services are also fully operational at 30% on-site capacity. These are the businesses and activities allowed to operate at 30% maximum venue capacity for Alert Level 3. Let's proceed to alert level 2 restrictions. Same with level 3, it's up to the LGU to determine who should be allowed to go outside. At level 2, indoor dine-in services are now allowed at 50% seating capacity. In alert level 2, personal care services, religious gatherings, necrological services, and public service are allowed to operate at 50% maximum venue capacity. And these activities and businesses are allowed to operate at 50% maximum venue capacity. Let's go to Alert Level 1 guidelines. So except for those located in areas under granular lockdowns, in Alert Level 1, all establishments, persons, or activities are allowed to operate, work, or be undertaken at full on-site or venue or seating capacity. And here's the summary of the data discussed in this video. 
Thank you so much for watching. If you find the content of this channel valuable, remember to subscribe. Feel free to check out the other videos.